Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Gibbo the Shaman, and today we are talking about what happens when we have the moon placed in Libra in the seventh house for Aries Ascendant. So if you have Aries Ascendant, seventh house from that, directly opposite to that is going to be Libra. And again, we are talking about Vedic astrology, not Western. I'm not a Western astrologer, I'm a Vedic astrologer. And, um, yeah, so today we're talking about that. And before we get into that stuff, um, if you're looking for a Vedic astrology reading for me, then you can go to geboshaman.com, just like my channel name, geboshaman.com. Gebo the and, um, and also I offer, um, Vedic astrology certification course. So if you want to become a Certified Vedic Astrologer, then you can go to my website, geboshaman.com, and purchase that course there, as well as I offer Qigong courses and yoga courses, and you can see that all right here, and um, yeah, a bunch of other courses, products, services, things like that, that's been really helpful for me in my own spiritual journey, and I feel will be helpful for you guys. All right, so let's get into it. So today we're talking about moon in Libra in the sec in the seventh house. So those are three variables, three energies that we have to contend with or explain. So let's try to break it down and we can explain one by one and put them together and see what we get. So first of all, what is the moon? The moon is your mind. It's it's your mind, and when I say your mind, I don't think I don't uh, mean like your brain, your intellect. This is not the brain. It's the heart mind. It is the heart, the emotions, the feelings about yourself, the thoughts, your psychology. Moon is also uh, the the mother. And um, and motherly energy, how your mother treated you, and your relationship with your mother, things like that. And um, and then we have the moon is also pertaining to the to the tides, to water. It's a very watery planet, very emotional planet. Very, um, it has to do with like mental mental health and and uh, as well as pertaining to the fourth house, which is home, and things like that. So, um, then we'll talk about what is Libra and what is the seventh house. So Libra and the seventh house are very closely connected because Libra is the seventh sign of the zodiac. So we have Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra. That's the seventh house. That's the seventh sign. So, seventh sign corresponds to the seventh house. And Libra and the seventh house are, are very closely related energies. So we're essentially talking about the same or similar energies. So Libra has to do with um, partnerships, legal agreements, contracts, con contractual partnerships, agreements, like marriage. Uh, typically what you'll see is seventh house represents a lot about marriage. It also represents business partners and gives you a clue to what your business partners relationship with be will be like with par business partners and marriage and uh, it it also has to do with like any contractual agreements any legal agreements anything like that and um libra is the balance balance between you and other people balance between relationships balance in uh the marketplace you know it's 
um, has to do with uh, balancing, uh, you know, goods and services, mediation. Libra is the sign of the ambassador also, the diplomat, the peacemaker. See, Aries, which is opposite to it, is all about war, and it's the warrior, it's the uh, competitor, it's the, you know, the the person who does whatever it has to do to, to get the job done, to, to compete, to, um, to win, to uh, come out, you know, victorious. And so opposite to that is the peacemaker, the diplomat, the, um, you know, the ambassador. Um, and so this can be between different countries and different people. So, for example, Libra would make a great um, marriage counselor or things like that. Um, and so, and also Libra is the shaman, achieving balance in all respects, all worlds, whether that be physical, non-physical, spiritual. The shaman achieves balance in that. So, um, so that's, that's Libra and that's seventh house energy and seventh house is also other people besides yourself. Um, so with moon here, it shows that the mind is almost you have this conflict within you, this inner conflict. Because, remember guys, this, the, Air, the Ascendant is Aries, and so we bring that energy, like, for, for example, Aries is the glasses that you wear, the, the perspective that you have, the, the lenses that you are looking through. And it gives you a certain perspective, and it gives you a certain, um, like, focus in life. And so, Aries thing is to control, uh, to, you know, kill, steal, destroy, <laughs> compete, win, um, be at other people, um, be the competitor, be the athlete, be the, the champion. And so... That's the perspective of you, your perspective. That's your your lagna, your the thing that you were born with. That's like your physical body. That was that's what your body wants to do. That's what your um you know energy is all about. And then we have the moon opposite to this in Libra. So naturally your mind is going to fight against you you'll want to go compete go destroy people go uh win against people and uh you know whether that's martial arts whether that's sports of any kind you, you, you're all about competition winning and achieving the goal and this libra says this this libra moon says well Maybe it's not about achieving the goal. Maybe it's about having peace and harmony with other people. Instead of uh, instead of just proving to everyone that we're right and to to beat everyone over, you know, to beat everyone via force and aggression and physicality, rather than working with people to achieve a common peace and to help everyone to, to get along and to, you know, um, to, you know, cause, cause we can compete, but if that co competition is at, at, you know, someone's expense, then, you know, it's, 
sure you'll you'll beat them and they'll hate you <laughs> so what do you what do you accomplish with that um so libra is in contrast to the moon to the uh ascendant aries ascendant and it's it's like well this is it's kind it's kind of a, a softer um mind so even though you do have that aggressiveness and that a type type a personality and things like that um your mind is going to be in that soft place caring about others um wanting to to nurture others you know you see this in in sportsmen in uh, competitors, especially at MMA and things like that, where the person, the dude really hurts the other dude. Like, he, he beats the hell out, out of him, right? And then you'll see him taking a knee when he, when the other dude is passed out on the mat, um, you'll see the other competitor taking a knee and giving respect and, and acknowledgement to the other fighter. So that that's the Libra mood. That's um I'm still going to, you know, beat you up and be competitive and this is like in my nature. However, there's still some respect. Like it's not, you know, com competition doesn't have to be disrespectful. You know, there like Somebody who is a good sport, a good sportsman, will um, actually have a lot of respect for his competitor. In fact, um, in the Norse, in the Norse ways, uh, they would uh, it, the the Norse, the Vikings, the 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 Nordic people, they would often throw a spear over the competitors. And they would, like, give a prayer and, like, pray to Odin that they have a safe journey to to Valhalla or to, um, you know, uh, I think it was Valhalla or something like that. That they would, you know, die and, and go somewhere healthy or special or things like that. And so, and that was not only for them; that was for also for the, for their enemies. And so, you have this dynamic with this placement where it's very much about, like, um, just just considering other people, having respect for other people, and um, even though you your objective is to win and get your goals accomplished there's still like this the the mind will want to <coughs> to work with others to accomplish this so i mean sports organizers could be moon and libra while having aries ascendant like people who organize sports and put them on and work with both athletes, both competitors, to kind of come up with a contract to, to put this in place so that they can fight or, or you know, compete against each other and whatever. And so, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's legal agreements, it's binding contracts and things like that. And um, another thing with this is Remember, I said the moon represents your mother. Well, your mother could have Libra qualities, you know. Um, she could, like, she would be the one to treat you and your siblings, like, fairly and on a level playing ground and um, not give special treatment and, like, be fair with everyone and just kind of uh, non-judgmental and, and, you know, just kind of everyone kind of thing. And, um, and so 
the way this affects you is is good. It it's actually shows like a balanced mind. Libra is balance, moon is mind. And so with this you have you have a a pretty balanced, you know, ba balanced mental state. Um, everyone is, you know, prone to, you know, uh, down mental states like depression and things like that. However, if you have a moon here, then, um, it tends to be pretty, prety balanced, actually. That's, it's not, it's not bad at, at, at all. Um, and, you know... Something that I t I want to say with every, any time that I'm talking about the moon, is that you really got to look at the the phase the moon was in at the time of your birth. Because that'll show you if you're prone to depression, that'll show up in there. Like if the moon is black, like a new moon, a black moon, um, where no sun sunlight is shining on it then, um, you know, that you have that, um, propensity to, to be a little bit darker, a little bit depressed, and, uh, a little bit more prone to mental illness and things like that. Uh, so, whereas if you had a full moon, like a full moon or, or like 60% plus is like bright moon uh because it it does change you know as the phases change it'll change the percentage of brightness in the moon so if you have like 60 percent brightness or above then that's a great that's great that's a healthy moon and that helps you with not getting so depressed not getting over overly depressed or things like that and, you know, if you are one of these people with the dark moon, um, something that I've found, like, especially helpful is, uh, excuse me, uh, is doing mon mantras. So if you do a mantra like Om Namah Shivaya or the Triamb Triambaka Mantra or the Gayatri Mantra, things like that, um, you know, those will help the mind. And if you'd like your own personalized mantra, um, I look at your chart and I will, uh, I always come up with a, a personalized mantra for every client of mine based upon their astrology chart. And, um, and so, um, you know, if you'd like that, then you can go to my website, gabotheshaman.com and, um, uh, you know, I have links down below in the description. And yeah, getbogleshaman.com, purchase an astrology reading there. And um, we can work something out. And I will, you know, it's included in every um, every astrology reading that I give is you'll get your mantra, you'll get your ritual, like a specific mantra, a specific ritual to, to do every day. And, um, that really helps, you know, change your mental state and strengthen the positive mental state. Um, so with this, um, you know, another thing is with the moon here, you know, it's, yes, it is, um, it is opposite from your ascendant, however, it's looking at your ascendant, so there tends to be this um, kind of thing where you 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 you'll be one to accept like your feelings, and you'll you're probably not one of those people who stuffs your feelings down or downplays them or things like that, and. Um, and so it, it's, it serves to, you know, help you there, help you become aware of your feelings and things like that, which is really helpful because people who aren't aware of their feelings or who stuff them down get pretty sick. 
It's uh, like, you know, uh, suppressed emotions can like really make, make the body sick. Um, in addition to this, this is your spouse. Seventh house is your spouse. So, um, with this, your it shows that your spouse is going to be like your mother. Essentially, it's what that is. And, you know, every everybody tends to want to have their spouse as, or, or their parents, uh, like, they look for the qualities that their parents had, and they they look for a spouse with those qualities. And this is a very unconscious thing to do. You know, it, it, we're not consciously doing this, but, you know, unconsciously we want to relive and resolve the the problems and issues that we've had with our mothers, you know, or with uh, men with their mother and women with their father. So, you know, things like that. And, um, yeah, um, so this shows that you're... Your spouse, depending again on the state of the moon, um, and depending on what other planets are here or aspecting here, like you'll see different qualities. So, if it's a dark moon, spouse tends tends to be depressed, and things like that. If it's a full moon, then they tend to, you know, be that motherly figure to you, um, and. You know, the issues with the mom, mother is usually resolved in that. So, um, it tends to be, if it's a full moon, it, the, like if it's a man's chart and seventh house is his female spouse, um, this tends to be a person who is very, just wants to be kind of a, a homemaker or like, just wants to be with her family and not be working or or like too heavily involved with you know outside issues just kind of stay at home and and raise the kids and that kind of thing um so again this depends on you know other planets that are here um you know, for example, if you had, like, Mercury here, that would give a different result. If you had, uh, Venus... Oh, yeah, and while we're at it, Venus is also a significator of the spouse, the female spouse, to, uh, in a man's chart. And if you're a woman, uh, Mars is, is your spouse, as well as, uh, Jupiter. Look at those two. Especially Mars in that chart, yeah. And just see if it conjuncts, if it aspects, and all that stuff. And we'll be talking about Mars in your chart as well, and, and Venus and Jupiter and all those things as I continue with these various series. So, alright guys, so that is pretty much it for me. I'm tired, so I'm gonna take a break here. And, um, yeah, that's it for me, so... If you want to get a reading from me, then you can go to my website, gebotheshaman.com. That's G-E-B-O, the shaman, S-H-A-M-A-N, dot com. And yeah, other than that, we will talk to you next time. Peace. See ya.